I just got back from the gym, I'm hungry, and you know I have a dang hard sweet tooth. So you know what I always like to eat? I always like to eat cereal, but the problem is sometimes I really need to watch that I don't eat too much of it. That being said, I finally found a dang cereal that I can eat the whole freaking box. The whole box and not even feel bad because I'm getting high protein, lots of protein, all them gains. In fact, check out Magic Spoon because Magic Spoon is not only high protein, keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, wheat free, naturally flavored, totally delicious, childlike cereal for adults. It's the legit. And yeah, I'm serious, legit. There's only 3 grams of net carbs, 11 grams of protein, and 0 grams of sugar in this cereal. And the protein is coming from quality sources. It's literally legit like milk protein, milk base. This stuff tastes delicious, it's awesome, and I'm going to show you. Oh, this stuff tastes so good, it smells so good, I even eat it with water. No doubts. And I'm serious, there's no shame in doing so. This is the blueberry, and all the flavors are only 110 calories a serving. Gives you great flavor, great texture. Great crunch, great reminiscence of that it's like favorite childhood cereal. And check out that cocoa. Don't sleep on this stuff. Magic Spoon, huge thanks for sponsoring today's video. So seriously, Magic Spoon, the cereal for making gains. Go grab yourself some right now using that coupon code below, Joel, or just click on that link and you will get free shipping. Not to mention, they also have a money back guarantee. That's right, Magic Spoon is so sure that you're gonna love this product that they're gonna guarantee your freaking money. So what do you have to lose? Free shipping, money back guarantee. Let's get eaten. Let's make some freaking gains and I love cereal. Hey everyone, Joel Anthony here. We're still in Calgary, Alberta. Lovely spot. Today we're outside Pin Bar, Pin Bar, which is like a pinball bar. So here to do the food challenge. It's something like a five-ish, six-pound sandwich challenge. I don't know too much about it. Uh, I just know there's a lot of fries, a lot of meat, a lot of bread. It's our second challenge of the day. Mr. Scott's already in there. So yeah, let's head on in. Looks like a cool spot. And uh, hopefully we can get this challenge. We only have 30 minutes to complete it. So we get it for free, and if not, I don't know, so good luck. All right, everyone, so here with the challenges. They're absolutely massive. Uh, we got loads of pastrami, we got coleslaw, we got a whack of french fries, spicy mayonnaise, mustard, cheese on there as well. I mean, it looks aesthetic, but geez, this is gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a rough one. We only have 30 minutes to do it. Uh, how are you feeling, Scott? Uh, ready enough to eat. We'll yeah. see how she goes, but uh, let's only get one, to her. Only one way to do it, That's so right. let's try to get it done. Let's just go for a win. All right. So we're outside on their patio, uh, so it's kind of a nice spot. Uh, things will cool off a little bit, but anyway, it looks good. So uh, let's just get started. Save the count of, what, five? It's gonna get messy too, sorry guys, it's all yeah. saucy. Save the count of, what, five, four, three, two, one. Let's eat. Hey everyone, welcome to this video where today we take on the biggest pastrami sandwich I've ever seen and the biggest pastrami sandwich challenge I've ever seen. So here we are at Pin Bar in Calgary, Alberta. So this is our second challenge of the day and I tell you, we were really feeling it. We were really hoping this thing was going to come out small and if anything this came, thing came out big. We were just not really feeling 100%. We had done a challenge, as I mentioned before, but also we just recently got back into food challenges. We both had long breaks um, where we didn't do any kind of, we'll call it competitive or any kind of serious eating. So this was going to be a rough ride. We knew that. So I got very, very serious. I just knew I needed to put my head down and get it going. The pastrami is really nicely cooked. It's nice and soft. Probably some of the softest pastrami I've ever had. So definitely soft, moist, juicy. And have the one thing which was really really great as you saw and are seeing is the pastrami was very moist. The pastrami was moist and soft and if that would have came out chewy we just probably would have just got buried right there. So really lucky that it came out moist um, and not chewy so it was, it, and, and honestly it was very tasty. Taste does help in a challenge. People always say like does it make a difference how the food tastes? First answer the obvious question, yes, we always taste the food. If the food tastes good, I guarantee it's gonna be easier to eat, no matter how full you are, because you're enjoying it. You're having that encouragement from your mind, that natural encouragement from your body saying, yes, we're liking this, please keep eating it. Whereas if the food is not tasty, or at least you personally are not enjoying it, 
it becomes a lot more difficult because you're not only then just forcing yourself to eat, let's say, a large quantity or motivating yourself to eat a large quantity, but you're also motivating yourself to eat a food that you're not enjoying or doesn't taste optimal to your preference, etc. So, yes, luckily everything here was tasting very nice. So half my Sammy and Scott are both done the meat. And half done my fries. I'm very thankful that the meat was tender and juicy because it went down pretty easy. That bread is going to be a hell of a ride. It's a big like French loaf, something, something. So let's just get it done. In anticipation for our rough ride, we also did ask for the fries not um, cooked like overly crispy or not burnt or anything and they did cook the fries perfectly. The fries were uh, nice and cooked, but just cooked. They weren't, you know, again, overly crispy, but they still had a nice bit of crunch. Um, still, you know, anyway, so yeah, the fries were also cooked good, which was also a lifesaver, because like I said, we went into this guns blazing 100% right from the start, because we absolutely knew we were going to need this. This was going to be an absolute battle. I don't, I don't, I have the it. It's almost time to shave the beard. I'm getting a little too much on there. I think you're gonna do it tonight? Yeah. Dave, sure. Or at least what we anticipated to be a battle. So now a lot of people also say like sometimes like, oh, blah, 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 blah. You know, push yourself. Well, this is pushing ourselves, guys. We're doing two challenges back to back. And although maybe it's not overtly obvious how much effort we're putting into it, you just gotta see, you can tell by our mannerisms. You can tell by, you know, the severity we're approaching everything with. Fries are nicely cooked too, nice and soft, so they're uh, perfect cook. Make sure they eat it. That's right. No cut lips today. And whereas some other eaters, you know, let's say when they get to this point of let's say 90% capacity, or you know, a 9 out of 10 difficulty, a 8 out of 10 difficulty, they start to really, really, really like slow down. They start to, it's like overtly obvious. For Scott and I, it's not overtly obvious. We have both pushed ourselves literally to a 10.5 in the past. And it, I mean, it was obvious, but it wasn't like over the top. We are both just heads down. We're gonna push ourselves till we literally blow up. I always say, worst case, you fail or you die. And we both kind of go into each one of these competitions and or challenges, in this case, uh, you know, basically ready to fail, ready to die. We're ready to just push it to the end because really we don't care. So it's kind of a game face. It's a poker face, I guess you could say. But don't let that, uh, let's say, give off the opinion, which I guess maybe this is what it is. Don't let that, you know, necessarily give it off as if this is the easiest thing in the world. Um, we're just, I guess, better at hiding it, and it's not till we're at a 9.9 .9 or a 10 that you're like, wow, they're dying. So we're five minutes and 33 seconds in. I just got my half the fries left and about three quarters of the bun. Joel's got half his bun left, so he's gonna beat the new record. I think they said it was only beaten once before. Is there a record? What's the record? I don't think they had a record, so. Yeah, it's only been once before, so we'll find out the record. So yeah, like I said, that's pretty much all I have to say about the challenge. Um, again, very, very, very thankful that the pastrami was uh, nicely cooked and like was moist and juicy. Very thankful that the uh, fries were cooked nicely. The bread was not too bad. I mean, it was uh, you know a bit like a French loaf or whatever. So definitely any of that crust was quite tough, but it wasn't like the craziest, toughest you know bread I've ever had by any means. So we, you know, once we kind of got in front of us, it was absolutely massive. It was very, very huge. But luckily, this was a situation where it was seemingly easier to eat than it appeared. Um, whereas there's many situations where it's the other way around. Where you're like, oh, this is going to be a walk in the park. And it is absolutely like, it just destroys us. But luckily, this was a time, especially because we needed it. We really needed that favor. Um, so luckily, this was, I'm going to say, um, you know, coming up, coming up, uh, coming along easier than we originally anticipated. Yeah, go! Yes, go! <laughs> so hopefully we can get some wins out of this challenge, everybody. I'll leave you to it. Again, we only have 30 minutes to complete it to get the meal for free. Otherwise, it was I think like 40, 50 dollars. 
but yeah, anyway, pin bar, pretty interesting spot. A bar full of pinball machines. And so we'll get to the rest of the video. Hopefully we can get some wins, everybody. Um, the previous record uh, was 27 minutes, so the individual just barely finished. So yeah, let's see what happens. Tune on in, and uh, well, as I always say, YOLO. It's like eight minutes, ten seconds in. Both getting it done. Both down to the brad. Woo! It's getting down. I get serious for this one. There's a police van. <laughs> Just a police van with four policemen looking over here, and joining a little bit of entertainment. Waving at us. Waving at us. Wondering what the heck's going on. Woo! up. Somewhere about uh, 10 minutes, 18 seconds. Scott's really right behind me, doing great. So yeah, overall, the pastrami's really tasty. A pretty tasty challenge. Glad we got to get it done. Especially for the segment of the day. Well, Scott will just finish up here momentarily, and uh, I'm gonna assume maybe that's a new record. We'll go with that. Yeah, the previous record was 27 minutes. Okay, so the previous record was 27 minutes, so we're both gonna beat that time. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, no, appreciate it. Really <laughs> Never know. Yeah. Scott just down to his last bites here. Nice, 13.53 for Scott. Dude, yeah. crush it! Woo, woo! Good job, buddy. How you feeling? Full? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Good. It's kind of what happens to him, two challenges, but I will say I got really serious with the gang there. I'm glad that we were able to get it done. Uh, both crushed it. Got the records. It was a big one, so uh, yeah, huge thanks to everybody here. Pin bar, yes. really cool spot. Maybe we'll play some pinball after. If I can't even walk, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, we got some dessert coming here hopefully pretty soon, and then we'll uh, bounce on out here. Scott? Oh, good challenge. I really liked the pastrami. It was really nice and soft. It was flavorful. Uh, the, the, even the fries were uh, they cooked well. Good. Yeah, they were cooked really nicely, so they went down easily. Uh, just, yeah, just a bit full. That's about it, That's you know? That's about it. So, everybody, thanks for watching. Until next time, say happy, happy, hungry, happy eating. Have a lovely day. Oh, and don't do it, we do.
And an absolutely huge thanks to our friend Shonda for coming out, longtime friend, subscriber. What did you think of today? It was amazing. It's such a, a different experience, like seeing it on YouTube, laying in your bed, chilling, <laughs> and like seeing it right there live in person, right in front of you. Like, it's crazy. Hey, well, not only did she come to one challenge, she came to two. Two of both are Calgary challenges. Yeah. <laughs> so you got the full ride. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming out. Much appreciated. Super, cool. super nice girl. Huge thank to Miss Carrie as well. Carrie also <laughs> came out. She didn't really want to be in the video, but hey, we got to get her in it. Uh, thanks for coming out. So much fun here in Calgary. It's been a lovely evening. Yeah, Ashley's like perfect temperature out. Lovely people. Oh. <laughs> Good food. Right? What more can we ask for? So thank you, Calgary. Thank you, everybody. Until next time. Stay happy out the hungry. <laughs> I didn't know. And Stay uh, happy out the hungry. <laughs> and happy eating. Yeah. And here we are in Lucky Louis, Lake Louise. There's mountains and more mountains up here. It's a big freaking mountain. Look at one's up in the dang clouds. Oh, uh, pretty cool. Uh, there seems to be some kind of BS going on with this dang traffic, though. It looks all messed up, so we're going to figure that out, and hopefully we'll actually get to see Lack and Lewis. And this is absolute rubbish! So, we're at Lake Louise. We're going to try to go see the big lake, and anyway, they literally, like, you see all these cars and stuff? This is just one part of them waiting. Like, this is a string of traffic, and guess what? They won't even let you go to freaking Lake Louise. They literally have, like, basically the they're basically using the town or like the area as like capacity. So somehow they basically shut down a town. Holy jump it's look at this stuff. Look at that freaking string of traffic of people waiting to get into Lake Louise. That is ridiculous. Dude, that's only one lane. Uh-huh. We gotta make sure that we can somehow get back and not have to sit through that traffic. Okay, well you So yeah, this is crazy, but uh we'll figure it out. Well, although it's a load of garbage that we can't go see Lake Louise. We are uh, at the Lake Louise kind of uh, basically ski resort, which is a little cabin looking thingy thing. And they have a gondola going up the side of the mountain. I think you can see that. Yeah, a gondola going up the side of the mountain there. There's a really cool gondola. I think it's in Banff where you actually like, go up the mountain. That's really fun. Um, this, we're just literally gonna stop for a minute before we have to try to get back and figure out how to get around that traffic and fight it and get back on the road. So maybe, maybe we'll stop in Banff, maybe we won't. Uh, but yeah, so again, it's still mountains, it's still very beautiful. Just unfortunately, we can't go see the world famous big old Lake Louise, which is a big, 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 basically crystal blue pool. Like that water you saw, it's that, but it's a huge, huge, huge lake. So YOLO, make the best of it and let's get her done. So we made it out of that traffic mess. No thanks to Google by any means. Google was trying to direct us into this big old pile of traffic, which would have taken us probably like two or three hours. But luckily, due to reading a map, we got our way out of it. And we just, uh, you can see the train just went by. The tracks are just literally rising there, the rails. So we didn't even have to wait too, too long here at the train tracks. And we should be back on the highway here momentarily. I'm not trying to jinx it. But we made it and hopefully avoided like literally about three hours of traffic for no dang good reason other than for somehow Lake Louise closed. Shut her down. Yeah, like I don't know how you can close down town, but anyway. Uh, so yeah, thank God. Fingers crossed. I'm not trying to jinx it yet though. And um, we will soon be back on the highway um, again. But I will say just we've had beautiful views. Like it's just mountains everywhere. Everywhere we're going is just surrounded by these big, beautiful mountains. Lots of cars and people around though, I'll tell you that much this weekend. Uh, so yeah, YOLO. So back on the highway, heading towards Banff. Look at the signs of Banff. 30 kilometers, Calgary 155. And I think these exact mountains, I'm pretty sure these are the ones I had in my video last time, but I'm 99% sure they were white peaked back, at the, uh, back in May. So now it uh, being August, uh, they are no longer white peaked, so. I guess they do kind of warm up a little bit around here. Although, I mean, well, it's 20 degrees out, something, 20 something out, but uh, yeah, pretty cool. That's where And we're there's Calgary. What's up, Calgary? We're back. It's been not that long, to be honest, but always nice to see you again, Calgary. Scott, ready to be back in Calgary? Hell yeah. Calgary. Yeehaw. 